Hi, it's Kimberly from Animaker. Today I will tell you how the maturing algorithm works. This video describes version 2.0.2 posted on February 10, 2020. Let's begin. We have two tracks, target and reference. First it normalizes the reference to 0 dB and remembers the coefficient by which the amplitudes were multiplied. Both tracks are then split into mid and side channels using mid-side encoding. The mid-channel is a mono version of your track. The side channel is the difference between the left and right channels. The formulas are shown on the screen. Then maturing splits both tracks into pieces for no more than 15 seconds each. Why 15 seconds? In modern music, major changes occur every 8 bars. 15 seconds equals 8 bars at 128 BPM. This step could be slightly improved by connecting the BPM analyzer to maturing, but the results are already good. After that, it finds the RMS values of all the obtained pieces of both mid-tracks. Averages the found values to find the average RMS values of both mid-tracks. Extracts pieces whose RMS value is greater than the average. This filters out the break sections, leaving drops and loud parts of the builds. These pieces store the most important information about the volume, frequency response, and stereo width of tracks. It then finds the new average RMS values, but only for the extracted pieces. The amplitudes of the entire target track are multiplied to align these RMS values of the target and reference tracks. A small note, due to the fact that this algorithm must have access to all audio file data at once, it will not be possible to implement it as a VST plugin. Equalization Maturing divides these loud pieces another 150 to 160 times to get the size of the pieces equal to the size of the FFT, 4096 samples. It then performs the Fourier transform of each small piece and then finds the average frequency response. It repeats this operation four times, for the mid and side channels of the target and reference tracks. Then the matching of frequency responses begins, but most importantly, separately for the mid and side channels. This trick also provides a very precise matching of the stereo width as a bonus. It divides the reference average frequency responses by corresponding target frequency responses to get two matching FRs for each channel. Since these arrays have a linear scale, and the sound is logarithmic in nature, it translates these arrays to a logarithmic scale using interpolation and oversampling. It then smooths the resulting arrays using locally weighted scatterplot smoothing, also called LAWIS. This smoothing algorithm works best in this case, it provides remarkable accuracy with no visible roughness and saves momentums on the edges of arrays. It translates the smoothed matching FRs back to the linear scale and applies the inverse Fourier transform to them to get the finite impulse responses, and multiplies them by the Han window. Next step, maturing convolves the mid and side channels of the target track with the corresponding furs using the same padding. This step takes a long time, compared to the previous steps. Equalization is complete. After equalization the RMS values change slightly, so it corrects them. It temporarily clips the result, calculates the RMS, and equates it to the reference. This step is repeated several times. Examine the source code if you don't understand this step. It doesn't really have a scientific basis, it's just a developer's intuition. Next, the brick wall limiter is used. It removes all peaks, trying to maintain the maximum RMS without audible signal distortion. Final step, maturing multiplies the result by the coefficient from the very first step to get the necessary peak amplitude. And then it exports the result. These steps are enough to get a fairly good level of quality. How can this be improved and what is missing? There is no separate compression pass. The compression effect is achieved using the final brick wall limiter. An exciter is not used. But we think this increases the versatility of the algorithm. Because not every music genre needs it. There is no expander or noise gate. 
but these tools are also quite specific and are not often used in the final mastering. And there is still no dithering. We have not yet decided to implement it. What do you think about this? We are interested in your opinion in the comments. If you want to suggest a useful step to this algorithm that will work for most music genres and styles and know how to automate it, send an email to Sergey or create an issue or pull request in the GitHub repo. Let's make the next version of Maturing better together. Have a good week.